Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. In today's video, I will be bringing you a thrift flip. This is where I take the items that I have thrifted throughout the month and I get them all ready to resell. If you are new to our channel, this is something I do along with my husband, Chris. We take unwanted, unloved, outdated thrift store finds and give them new life. And we share the vision and the process of what we do to these items all to get them ready to resell. And we are blessed to have two booths in a local antique mall. So here is the hodgepodge collection of thrifted items that I have thrifted throughout the month. I share with you them in my thrift hauls, in my thrift with me's, if we're lucky to get some of those. And this is the video where I share with you the process of what I do to these items and my vision for these items and how I prepare them. And for me, I resell them in our retail booths. I know from my regular viewers, you're probably like, yeah, 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 Yvonne, we know, take off the price tags, but I treat every video like it's the first time as somebody's watching. Nothing says a thrift flipped item by painting over a price tag. So remove any price tags, any manufacturer's tags. It is now your item. So I know when I am doing these thrift haul flips, I am doing a lot of items. I am sorry for that. I am just one person that I know if I am thrifting almost every day that I need to get these items done. I need to get them inventoried or into the booth or whatever it is that they need to go. So here I am assessing this little horsies, taking any pieces and parts that I can. I'm not sure, I couldn't really pull out the tail. Do I leave the tail, do I leave the mane? I wasn't really a fan and so then i just decided like hmm, okay well it's in there and we'll see how it looks once i get him painted i'd already removed the wheels but if you remember from the thrift haul somebody had grillo glued the little feet into the block of wood that he's standing on and the grilla glue swells so what i'm doing now is i'm cutting off that excess grilla glue so it's nice and flat I don't know why I passed this little sewing box up at the Salvation Army that first time. What a nice God wink moment that three weeks later, I think it was almost three weeks later, it was still there. Why did the dowels, these little dowels intimidate me? I don't know. So they are all loose. So all I'm doing is taking some of the tight bond glue and I'm just gluing any ones that are loose. And I'm not going to worry about the ones that are missing right now at the moment. I actually had this little calendar for a little while. I needed Chris to cut off that little apple part of the box on there. I wanted it to be a little bit more plain. I know I am not daring when it comes to cutting things off, so I leave that to him. So this little calendar had a couple little pegs on, on the side here and on the top where it had some pieces and parts that were all kind of attached together. And I just, like I said, I wanted it to be more plain. So I'm just using a little bit of spackle, that spackle that turns pink, that's pink and then turns white when it's dry. So for the top of these candlesticks, I always remove that little spiky peg that keeps those candles on. I, that gives them a little bit more option of what you can put on top of these. And yes, it does take some muscles to get that um, cut off. Sometimes it will unscrew, sometimes it is just a nail, but I find most of the time I have to cut it off. So for this little stool, it had some spots where it was actually stapled together. It is just a little pine stool. It is very rough, it's very raw. So I'm gonna be sanding the entire piece using some 220 to get it nice and smooth. The top and the bottom and the sides, it was all very rough. And of course I can sand this little calendar holder now. It, I love that pink that turns white. And I'm painting over it, it doesn't, you can use wood filler if you want, but like I said, I'm just painting it over and it's just this nice simple MDF board. And this little horsey was hand painted back in the day, so that means he all that paint is raised. So I need to take the sander to um, him. Also, I just got this Black & Decker little sander that I'm testing out, our rigid sander that I absolutely loved after many years finally died. So I do like that it has a point on it, um, and it's a nice hand size, I have to say. I've seen a lot of other YouTubers use this one, so I thought, why not give it a try? Now this little birdhousey, I don't know if I broke the peg out, the doll out where the little birdie would get to perch, 
but I don't know. So Chris is going to go ahead and sand it down and then end up drilling it out so that um, he can put a new doll in there so the birdie has some place to perch. It's really decorative actually, but it still looks nice to have that piece. Now it's time to get these items all cleaned and I'm just using some hot water and some super clean. This is a great grime and degreaser, just a little bit of the liquid in with the water and then just wipe off. I like it because there's no rinsing. Then after everything was dry, I went through and taped off anything that I did not want to get paint on. And so here, I, did you really need to see me taping? You just have to eyeball what you want taped off, what you want to keep. I liked these, but I didn't want to get it through the window, so I taped the inside of those little houses. And luckily, I'm still on the fence about what to do with this little horse's mane and tail, but we will figure it out. So as I'm working on these pieces, I'm just going to be removing this roping. I, though it doesn't, it looks okay, I don't want to have to try to paint around it and I can reapply it if I choose to by the time I finish it up. Some of these pieces were really raw and the way that I'm going to be painting them today, I'm just going to be putting a couple coats of shellac. That way that the paint just doesn't absorb into the wood. So the shellac is just going to, you could do it with a polycrylic, a, any kind of acrylic spray if you wanted to. I just have the shellac in the workshop on hand. And so I'm just going to give these a couple coats of this just so it evens out the porosity that it just isn't su sucking in the paint. So if you are regular to my channel, I know you were used to me using the ready to use paints and the kills paints from Walmart. But for my small items that I am hand painting, I have to tell you, I am really liking the chalk paint, just the dry time and the coverage of it and being able to hand sand it. It is just working out for me. I'm liking the finished product, you know, as a flipper, it is, we try a little bit different things. We see what works for us and like this i i'm liking the waverly chalk paint for my small items so when i'm going in here i've typed taped off these little bird houses where i don't want to get the tape and now i'm just going back in with some ink waverly chalk paint and the nice thing about that if i i only have to do one coat of this black ink of waverly which i absolutely love and the ready to use black onyx i would have had to do at least two so it's a little bit more time saving yet i have to say i'm still working on my first bottle of this black it is it is a nice i have to say i am a fan of the black ink For this birdhouse, it was nice. I was able to remove that metal that was on it. It had three screws on each piece. And so I like the barn wood look that the bottom is. And so I'm just painting the underneath of this little roof white and that very bottom white. And there's actually some type of a signature of the person who made these birdhouses, even though they're mass produce. I will be keeping that on the bottom. For a lot of these pieces, especially like this little box, how am I going to paint around and not get paint all gooped up around those dowels? So I am just going in with Rust-Oleum spray paint, paint and primer in the flat black. And I'm pretty much going to be doing all the small items. It's just the coat coverage is wonderful. It's a one coat coverage with the black. And that way I get that nice smooth paint job especially being able to spray paint it with the the way that I have to get into this little lantern. And if you can tell, I use contact paper. I put one in the inside and one on the outside, and that way I'm not getting that chicken wire painted. Yes, I could. We do have a sprayer. We could hook up the sprayer. But when it comes to these little items and trying to spray like that, you waste more paint than I think we feel then you actually get onto the item so this is just what works for us with spray paint out of a can i've been asked a couple times well you have a sprayer why are you not using that that is why because just the way that the sprayer oversprays 
these small items. It's great for our bread boxes and our stools and our side tables. But when it comes to these little items, I do just really like the can of spray paint. And then every once in a while, I remember to grab a handle. I've had this handle forever. I don't know why. I always grab the spray paint and start spraying and not use the handle. I, there too, I get asked about that too. Like, why are you not using the handle? Doesn't your finger hurt? I don't, I don't know. It's right next to the spray paint. Do you all do that? It's right there and you still go on with what you're doing. I guess I'm just in the motion of getting things done that I'm just, I guess you call it lazy. I'm too lazy to put the spray handle on top. And I will say with most of these items being manufactured, being the MDF board, being that particle board, whatever you want to call it. Yes, some of it is a real wood, but this Rust-Oleum works on all that. It works on metal, it works on wood. I just love the way that it adheres. And we are blessed that I get about $3.50 a can, and all these items barely even took over one can. And then of course I don't want to forget about the little screws and those little nails. And yep, if you have save your styrofoam because it is nice to be able to stick that in the styrofoam and be able to paint your nails and screws. So for this piece, I'm not even going to spend the time at painting it black. This is a piece that I know I'm going to be keeping for myself and I just want it to be distressed white. I love all that markings of it, but I, I really want it to pop out with some white. And kind of like the spray handle hello i have a lazy susan this is what i thrifted the lazy susan for so i can turn my items it must just be the day i don't know but so i am using the waverly chalk paint in white and as you see i did water it down just a little bit because you all who use chalk paint all the time in my videos have comment and taught me how to use this paint properly and i thank you all now for these birdhouses, I need to seal in that black ink chalk paint. So I am just taking a little bit of the polycrylic, poured it out in a little bowl, and using a poly brush to apply it on. Just a thin coat, I just need to seal that black in before moving on to my white. Reason for pouring it into a bowl is because you can water distress this chalk paint so the black will be coming off on my brush so you do not want to be dipping it back into your polycrylic. Now to seal the paint in that I sprayed painted with the Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the flat black, I am sealing that paint in with polycrylic in the clear matte. And so what I'm doing here is before I turn these pieces over, I'm getting them sealed. I find that if I seal it in and then I flip them over, I am less likely to mark or mar up or remove any of the paint accidentally because this is only within hours, so it's not like it's had time to cure. It's dry, but it hasn't had time to cure. Now, after the polycrylic has dried, and it only takes about an hour. That's why I love that polycrylic. And then I can flip them over and proceed to do the same on the other side of these pieces, whatever is left that needs painted. I had this little wooden caddy, and it, the little piece in the middle was too gold. I did not like the two different types of wood. So I chalk painted it, I polycrylicked it, and now I'm going in and just putting some white Waverly paint on it. This is just a look that I like. I like the outer box, but I just didn't like that handle. And then now I'm going back to my birdhouses and getting them painted with the Waverly white chalk paint also. This is why I tape off because I'm using a big brush and I'm just going at it. If you have a more steady hand than you and if you, I have to tape off. For the top of this birdhouse, if that would have been aged rust, rust and not manufactured rust, I would have left it, but I did spray paint it black. And for this turned wooden piece, I should have guessed it that that was going to bleed. So it is turning the white paint yellow. So now I'm onto a couple coats of shellac. And even though this is still for me, I still want it to look good. So yes, I did paint these little houses. If you could have saw them closely, they were not in good shape. The finish on them was had gotten wet. It it was not a good look. I know somebody said that they thought maybe they were uh, from the Magnolia line. It is what it is. And so two of these houses are going to be 
white. So I'm just going in. Like I said, I sprayed them. I taped off that little window. I do think that these are super sweet. So I kind of like to let you guys see like most every piece as I'm working on it. So I, do you guys want to see stuff like that? Or do you just want me to fast forward and not show you? I, I never really know. Do I show too much? Do I not show enough? <laughs> So this is just me painting some of these boxes. I absolutely love the detailing on these boxes and I'm glad that they are a good size box. So you know, of course I prefer to use the big brush when I am painting, but for things like this where you don't want that paint to pool up and make a mess, you gotta go in with that little detailed brush and maybe you guys are all better at it than me, but I somehow always maybe get too much paint on my brush. So I don't wanna have to spend a lot of time sanding, so I just go in with a smaller brush and make sure that my paint is nice and smooth. Then after going around with the detailing, now I can come back in and do the larger area with the bigger brush. So maybe this was why I was intimidated by picking this up to have to paint it, getting in between all these little dowels. But a little, I made sure that I didn't have a ton of paint on my brush so that it did not pull up around those dowels. And then going in with a little detail brush, especially around, I couldn't take the little knobbies off these drawers and I definitely did not want it to pull up to run down into how it's at an angle. So a little bit of paint and a few coats. The nice thing about doing this round robin type of painting is that when I finished up on the last item, the first item is now dry and I can proceed on painting coat number two. So comparing these two candlesticks, I can tell you that it is almost covered in the second coat. I just have to go back and look and pieces and parts for the third coat, but I do like how this Waverly, once I watered it down, definitely adheres in the two coats, mostly coverage. So definitely the one thing I have learned is the sooner you distress them, you can water distress with chalk paint a lot sooner. I think my previous problem was, is I was letting it sit overnight before distressing the pieces and that's why I had to use a lot of elbow grease and a lot of sandpaper. So now I made sure that I got my two to three coats on and then just made sure that they were dry to the touch and then I could go back in with a little bit of drop cloth and some water um, and distress them. And I do actually feel like the warmer the water, the easier it is to distress. I'm not sure if you all know that. I know some people distress with baby wipes it's just a personal preference, but I am actually having good luck with a little bit of warm water and just water distressing. Like I said, uh, you all taught me the sooner the better. So for, so for some of these items like the candlesticks, even though I sprayed the bottom, I didn't take the time to tape off. So what do you do? Do you put two to three coats of white on the bottom and let it dry? Or do you put one coat of black and polycrylic over it and then you're done? So I'm going for the one coat of black and polycrylic it, so it will be done. <laughs> it will be done. And for the back of this piece, to make it look a little bit more high-end, it was a manufactured piece. I painted the front of the frame white, and I'm just going through and sanding off for that crispy edge that runs over underneath the tape. And then I'm going to be doing the same thing like I did on the bottom of that horsey, is I'm going to be painting that black. I just think that takes it up a little bit notch and takes that cardboard and makes it, I know it's just the back of the piece, but it just makes me feel better. So now I need to seal this chalk paint in. That is one thing about chalk paint. It has to be sealed in because anytime you get it wet, it will come off. So for me to seal it in, I am using the Verithane finishing wax. This is what we use on all our items, our white items anyway. And I just love the smoothness. I love the smell of it. I love how it seals that in. And it's just a wipe on and wipe off. Now I can get everything put back together. So I, like I said, I was, I was really impressed that these were not glued on, that they were just three little screws that held them on. That was nice that I get to spray paint them separately. 
As I'm taking the tape off, the protective tape off all these pieces, I was like, oh no, I do not like this hair on this horse. So yep, I'm going to figure something else out, but right now I'm going to pull that out. But I definitely love, I already love how this horse is popping with the black and the white, putting these freshly painted wheels and those little nails back on. I do have a few pieces in this grouping that were going to stay black, like the smallest house. I didn't want to paint them all white. I, you know, I paint black and white. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking to some 220 sandpaper and I'm going on any of the sharp edges and giving it that little distressing that I love. And then I'm going back in with some steel wool, some fine grit steel wool. That's going to take down that shininess of the polycrylic that I sprayed to keep that paint on for longevity. And what it also is doing is opening up because I'm going to go in and Waverly Antiquing Wax this. And I just absolutely is obsessed with what brown antiquing wax does to black paint and how it grabs on some of that little wood, that distressing that is popping through. So it's now on to doing some details on some of these items. So, yep, that horsey that, oh, I just could not leave that hair on that horse. It just was not pretty. So I am getting some of my biggest jute rope. I think this is from Walmart. Um, I don't really use it very often, so this is actually perfect. I'm trying to figure out if it'll fit, how many times I need to roll it over. And I know I can pull the individual strings apart to make it look a little bit more airy like a horse's tail. I'm just going to take a piece of scotch tape because it's clear and just tape that, kind of roll that into a nice little package and then probably cut off what I need to stick in. There, there's holes in here where the previous hair was. Then I'll let that set up and then I'll kind of run a bead of hot glue down the back of the horse's leg to make sure that this is going to stay down. And then I'll add some more at the end to make it nice and full. But here are the holes that I need to fill for the mane. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna kind of eyeball where I think it should hang over. I can know that I can fold this over twice, put a little peach of scotch tape, and then kind of fan out and separate those pieces of jute. Same thing like the tail, I can cut half of what that scotch tape was, put some hot glue inside that hole, stick that little where the scotch tape is, and then just kind of fan it out, work all the way out the three holes. And then, like I said, I'll glue it down so it's more laying down on the, on the horse's head. And then I'll add in to make it full as I go. So here's that little sewing box, that one that I passed up three weeks ago. And it was actually at the Salvation Army. What a nice God wink moment. I was not worried about what those little dolls that are missing. Because I knew I had this bag that I had thrifted a long time ago of all these wooden spools spools so I'm just going to be gluing them in where that is I just I think it's just a nice decor item and I'm pretty sure whoever purchased it is probably going to be using it I was unsure if I was going to put the word thread on it I know that the spools will probably be in the way but you know why not it's not that difficult to cut out a little stencil on my cameo and put the word thread on this so with those little dowels being there to hold the threads, this is a nice, tight, little, weird angle to have to video for you, but I just centered it, measured on each side, made sure that it was centered, and now I'm just rubbing it in and making sure that it's good and attached. And then I'm just going to be using the Apple Barrel Multi-Use with a little sponge dabber, a makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree just to apply. And I'll do a couple coats until I get the black that I want to achieve just to make sure that it's nice and covered. Not squishing it through. I don't want it to go underneath that stencil. But as you see, I tape off as close to the st I tape out and cut off as close to the stencil as I can so it helps me be able to center it properly. Then after that paint is dry, I sanded it a little bit, and now I had sealed the rest of the piece already in with a very thin finishing wax, and I want to seal the stencil in, just taking it outside and using some of this acrylic spray. And then I still have four more pieces to add some type of detail to. For that cutting board sign, I picked out this saying. I thought that it was a sweet saying. I can imagine this in a kitchen. So this is the fun of doing a whole bunch of different fonts on one sign. It is time consuming, 
but I do love that I I do have the business edition. I pay for the business edition every month where all these little swirly letters are part of the business edition. So when you're doing it, you have to go into the, what they call glyphs. And I never know if I'm saying that right. And I have to pick out the letter that has that flowing little tentacle of a con continuation on the letters. I guess that's maybe how you call it. But I do love the flowing of that type of letter. So, yep, I, this is the font that I'm using. I never try to say these fonts. Oh, my gosh, there are so many fonts out there. So the cursive fonts, I'm doing a little bit differently. I'm doing the glyphs, and then I have to remember to weld the whole thing together. And then for the plain letters that are not cursive, I'm going to be using the same font on all of those also. But for the glyphs, I have to remember when you're doing glyphs and you're doing that swirly and the cursive, you have to go in and group it together. You have to go in and weld it together so it's just one continuous flow. And after getting all my words typed out, centered, everything's welded together, everything's, and I have to group the whole thing together and then size it to a the frame I'm going to be putting this on. Now the thing is, if I would have gone the same size as it showed, some of these fonts did not look good stretched out. I could do it long, but I couldn't do it wide. It just, it didn't quite fit properly. As you see, I have to just center it in the middle. If I would have tried to stretch it out to do the width of that, it was just, it made the words all wonky. I felt like there was just too much space on this now that I couldn't do that whole saying on to fit the inside of this. So this is another one of those business edition fonts that has the little additives of the glyphs. And so I'm just going in and trying to find a few of these little mosaic tiles to put on there. I just wanted some random pattern that was just something to fill. For that little black stool, I knew that I had this. I have a few of the mosaic tile patterns also on my Cricut. So I am going over looking for where it is, what I think. I try to look for one because sometimes these mosaic tiles can, you have a lot to have to weed. So I always am looking for the ones that's not a lot to have to weed. That's kind of how I pick them out. And I thought this one was perfect. So does this happen to you too when you are cutting out? I measured this and it still came up short. It was supposed to be 9 by 10 and it still was short. It's so frustrating. And I already weeded all this. It's not cost efficient wasting vinyl. So I am just going to make it work. So I'm kind of moving it around a little bit to see if I can. Nah, well, it's a rectangle, so that's not going to work. So I'll just center it as best as possible and just distress those edges that aren't covered. If you notice, I did tape around with some masking tape, some Dollar Tree masking tape, make sure that it was good in here. But I am going to give it a couple undercoats a little bit. It's already a black piece. I just don't want it to bleed under the way that it's rolling on the sides. I'm not really sure if it's good and adhered. And this was a weird little unfinished bench that still kind of has a texture on it yet. So I'm going to put a couple of coats of this Apple Baron black just to kind of seal in and lock that stencil in before I go on to its next color. So now I'll be using the Apple Barrel Multi-Use in White and it'll take about three coats to cover. I wanted to make sure that this was good and dry. That first cut, coat of white on top of this fresh black kind of looks grayish, but the multi-use doesn't really blend in together. But I like to make sure that I get a nice pop of white underneath there. Then I'll be using the assistance of the heat of the blow dryer to release that sticky to pull off all this masking tape and then to pull off that vinyl. That way, I'm, I don't think it will pull off my previous paint job, but I don't want to chance it. And then I need that white to stay on there for my before I wax it. So I'm going to go outside and spray some polycrylic on it to seal in this paint. And after that polycrylic was dry, I sanded the piece. I had not distressed this piece at all yet. So I'm going in and distressing all the edges, especially where that on the top, it didn't, the stencil wasn't all the way over. I'm just heavily distressing it there and making sure that this piece is nice and smooth now. And then I'm moving on and I'm using actually, I have a bottle of the Folk Art Antiquing Wax in my house. So that's what I'm using to kind of age this and richen up that black. 
then for this tiny little caddy, I just thought, you know what, I have some pieces and parts left over of this lavender from Walmart. So I stuck a little foam in it, a little bit of that dry grass, and a couple little pieces just to fill up this little container. So for the front of this little caddy, I actually wanted these crockery stamps actually fit the smallest one on this crockery stamp because really it's not cost efficient for me to put some vinyl on here or anything else because it, this piece isn't really going to go for very much. So I'm using the stays on ink and I'm just getting that little stamp all inked up. After that stays on ink dried, I'm going to be sealing it in with some of this acrylic spray and yep, I got to spray that outside too. So now I'm down to this crate. Now I wanted to just stamp on it or do some lettering on it, but the the pieces of wood are so far apart, I didn't really think that was going to look very, having that lettering all separated like that. So I'm like, you know, I wonder, I haven't been able to use the chicken yet of the animals from this IOD stamp. So she just fits on here. So I am going to make her work. So I cut a little piece of a burlap that I have, some ribbon, and now I'm going to be, um, I stamped her on some cardstock. And I'm taking that rag from earlier where I had some antiquing wax that I used, and I just watered that down a little bit to give her a little bit more aged look. And then I thought that was too much brown on brown, but she was too white. So then I go in and I ha actually have this random weird fabric that is black. It's not a suede, it's not a leather, but I thought that this would just help it along and make it pop a little bit and kind of cover up. So if you wanted to stick something in here, some greenery, I will probably maybe display it with greenery in it, but I'm not going to sell it with greenery in it because it's not cost efficient. So I just put cut that down to what I thought looked at peeling to my eye of the black and now I'm putting the burlap over it with some hot glue and then I'll put that little chicken on top. Now I'm just going to be using some Mod Posh on the top back of this cardstock to apply the little chicken on the front of this and then after I get her glued on the back I will go along the front. Now I haven't tried this yet so I'm hoping that it doesn't bleed the antiquing wax. I, last time I did it I did it the Mod Posh and then did the antiquing wax over to make it age. So we'll see how this goes. So I hope you all enjoyed the pricing. This is just something that I do once a month. Others ask me to include my prices in my thrift haul flips. It helps them, they feel, to figure out their pricing when they're reselling also. So it's not something I'm doing to resell here online. It's We still just sell them locally.
So hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. And as always, what was your favorite piece? Would you have done something differently? Would you have left them alone and didn't paint them? Taste is personal and I'm always up for some feedback and you know, they are thrifted, they were unloved, unwanted, and we are just happy to they give them new life and keep them out of the landfill. And as always, if you are part of my YouTube family, thank you so much. Your kind compliments, your kind comments, your thumbs up, and being so supportive of what me and Chris do just means so much to us. It is just so heartwarming to have such positive feedback from all of you. And if you are new and visiting our channel for the first time and you enjoyed this kind of content, consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video.